Hello everyone, my name is Takeru Kodama. I'm a third year PhD student of Kyushu University, Japan. Today, I talk about the tool of species discrimination. Uh, okay, uh, here is contents because I have a long time for presentation. First, I want to tell you the background about our activity of conservation monitoring research. After that, I will introduce you what we did. First, let me introduce all material species of cicada, Platypella albivanata. Uh, this is an endangered species uh, designing, uh, designated as a critical endangered in Japan. This is distributed only in Yonehara districts in Ishigaki Island, Japan. I will show you the map of the habitat. This is the map of around Japan. And this point, uh, suggested by Yellow Soko of the southern western islands of Japan, is the Ishigaki Islands. This is. And the Yonehara district is here. It is just one district. It's approximately two kilometers wide. Really small habitat. Since it was first described in 1974, it was seen only in the Yonehara district. After that, the number had decreased rapidly. Today, Aldebanata has disappeared for a long time. It has not been found for seven years since 2016. About the reason of its decreasing, there are some hypotheses such as other animals or some human activity, uh, but the fact is still unclear. We do not want to give up, so we have conducted conservation monitoring research every year. As you know, cicadas have loud calling sounds, so you may think it's easy to detect if it exists. However, uh, there is one problem. The closely related species Platypleura yayamana also lives in Ishigaki Island. However, until a while ago, uh, there, these two species were parapatric. In other words, uh, they were not distributed in the same area. This is the map of Yayama Islands, including Ishigaki Island, the right one, and the Iwi-Omote Island, uh, located on the left side of Ishigaki Island. I'm sorry it's small, but the black circle uh, on the upper side of Ishigaki Island suggesting the habitat of Albibangada, which means Yonehara district. On the contrary, Yayamana inhabits all over the two islands, suggested by the black triangles, but it's not in Yonehara. This difference in distribution and the extremely small habitats of Albibangata are also mysterious. But recently, through the modern research, the Yayamana has been founded also in Yonehara, the habitat of Albibangata. If you find a particular cicada like that in Yonehara, you have to discriminate it. But can you do that? These are very similar. So the problem is how to discriminate them. One of the diagnostic character to discriminate them is to is the coloration of hindwings. Yayamana, the left one, has uh, all black hindwings. On the other hand, Albibanda, the right one, has mainly black but spotted white hindwings. So you can discriminate by catching them and check the hindwings. However, Albibanda is a critical endangered species and protected by the Japanese law. So, if you capture it, you will be under arrest. <laughs> Another way is to hear the sounds. Here I prepared the sounds of two species. Okay, uh, please listen to them and let's try to discriminate. This is the Alibanda one.
This is a template coding some part of all particular data. And the next, the AMR one. Could you do that? Uh, I couldn't. <laughs> and as you listen, their sounds are also similar. It is difficult to hear the difference also for me. However, if you analyze, uh, it becomes easy. These are the spectral runs showing the pattern of the frequency variation. Sounds of the poetic player have the higher pitch phase and the lower pitch phase it becomes gradually lower pitch, like G, and jumps up to the high pitch. This is the particular sounds. It repeats this cycle, so it makes waveform like this. As you can see, the right Yayaman sound is located a little bit higher, which is showing higher pitch than the Arivanata one. A little bit higher. If you use the statistical methods, the difference will become clear. Uh, the Alemanza sound suggests a lower frequency than the Alemanza one. So now we are applying these methods to conservation monitoring research. That is acoustic monitoring. We bring a handy recorder and search the sounds actively to record it. And we installed automatic recorders in the forest uh, to search and record the sounds passively. That is the way we are doing for the modern research with the Ministry of the Environment Japan and the University of the Ryukyus. But uh, please imagine the scenario like this. One day, you are on the modern research you find, oh, there is a party player in the photo, and you get excited, you have a recorder in your hand, but it's not seen, so you cannot record it. You want to check the high wing, but it stays with the wind close. Of course, you cannot capture it, because if, if, if it is a Vibanata, you will be on the rest. Is there any way to discriminate this resting individual perfectly by its appearance? The answer is possible. It is geometric morphometrics. This is a way of analyzing complex shapes of animals. Like this left figure, you set some prominent points, such as the edge of the mandibles, as landmarks. Then you compare the coordinates of the landmarks. Especially for the wind vane pattern, like this right figure, a lot of previous studies suggested that this method was able to discriminate some related species. There are some examples about cicadas with morphology. The previous study about periodical cicada in the US, the classic morphometrics using wind vane only can discriminate only can discriminate not only the species of periodical cicada, but also the bruise, the group of which appearance in different year within the species. Another example for geometric morphometrics using with vein, the three pest species of Iran, which are so difficult to discriminate that it needs to see the male genitalia, are also discriminated by only the wind vane pattern. Geometric morphometrics uses the coordinates of the intersection of the wind vane. Therefore, it is easy to use for everyone. In other words, it is easy to apply. So, our purpose is to discriminate Arivanata and Yayamana by geometric morphometrics using wind vane pattern. First, they have to take photos of the winds. But the Manata views these derived specimens, which were captured at Yonehara in 1972 and have been preserved at Ryukyu University Museum. We totally used 34 specimens, 33 males and 1 female. For Yayamana, we captured new individual last year. 
June 2023, we captured at two localities, Miyara and Takeda, and then we made them into dry specimens. We totally used five, 58 specimens, 34 for Miyara, 26 males and 8 females, and 24 for Takeda, 12 males and 12 females. Next, we applied geometric morphometric method, which is called proclusive analysis. First, we prepared the photo of the right quarterly of the specimens. Then, we pointed totally 28 landmarks at the intersections of Wingley. After that, keeping the shape using extension, uh, centering, and the rotation of the coordinates. We overlaid these coordinates so that the sum of square of the distance of each coordinate become least. Through this process, uh, because we enlarge or reduce the shape, the information of size and shape were separated. So uh, we obtained the size data as the central size, the size indicator obtained from the coordinates and the shape data as the landmark coordinates. Using this, these data, we compared them between the species, localities, and the sexes. For the localities and the sexes, we picked up only Yayamana's data, because Adobibanata were captured from only one locality in Yonehara, and there was only one female specimen for this species. Okay, I will show the results. First, uh, about the central size. From the left side, Miyara, uh, Takeda, there are Yayama. And the right side, Yonehara, uh, is the Arimanata. The red box is the female, and the blue box is the male. Between the species and the localities, they are not so significant. <coughs> but uh, between the sexes of the Yayama, the sizes were significantly different. Uh, it means the females were bigger uh, than the males. But it's also suggested uh, in the previous study, so it is not so new result. Next, for the shape, wing bay pattern, First, between the species, the, this graph shows the result of PCA, principal component analysis. Two species were distributed almost separately. The red one suggested the Adelibagnata, and the blue one suggested Yayamana, and the blue one's shape suggesting the uh, sampling points. And uh, two species were distributed almost separately. And uh, two localities of Yayamana, the right blue groups were distributed overlapping. In the result of CVA, uh, canonical direct analysis, these two species were distributed also separately. To test the accuracy, we applied LOOCV, leave one out cross validation, for these results. It showed that high accuracy of 98.72% suggested almost perfect species discrimination. The thin plate spline, which is showing the variation between the two species, showed large distinction. It suggested that these two species largely different in the wing vein. The result of Procrucis and Nova statistically suggested that there is a significant difference in the wing vein pattern between Alibagnata and Yayamana. These are the results for between species. And the next, within the species. Second, about the within the species, Yayamana, PCA results show overlapping all, of all the localities and the sexes. Let's focus on each. For the localities, a CBA showed also separate, separate distribution, however, LOOCV showed low accuracy of discrimination and suggesting the 66 to 65 percent. So uh, it suggested that discrimination of the localities using wing bang is difficult. 
template line shows smaller distortion. So there was a small differences in some coordinates, but not so large. About the sexes, CBA also shows separate distribution, but the LOCB showed low accuracy, 64.58%. So it is also difficult to discriminate the sexes from within. The template line show almost no distortion for businesses. However, seeing the results of Procrucis and Nova, there was a significant difference only between the sexes. And the locality and the interaction between the localities and the sexes were not significant different. Maybe uh, it suggested that difference in the wing shape between males and females is very small, but the very small difference constantly exists, I think. Now let's move on to the discussion. The main question was, can wind geometry or metrics discriminate Arivanata and Yayamana? Our results said the answer is yes. This method can discriminate these species with high accuracy although it uses only a picture of right forward. We expected that this method may be effective for conservation monitoring. For example, for honeybees, uh, there is a software which conducts species discrimination by geometric model metrics using deep learning mechanisms. If you prepare the image of the wing, it can do them automatically from the setting of the landmarks to the species discrimination. Using some application like this example, such as deep learning or some AI, the species discrimination may become easy to use only if you prepare the proper photo of their wings. There was another question. Within the species Yayamana, can the localities and the or the sexes also be discriminated? The answer is maybe difficult. CBA showed the separate distribution, and the Procrucis and Nova showed significant differences in the sexes. But the discrimination accuracy of LOCB were both low at around 65%. Why there was significant difference between the sexes? We wonder it may relate to the size difference or the sex, sexual dimorphism of timber. About the localities, uh, there, were no, there was no significance. However, the localities we used, uh, Miyara and Takeda, uh, were relatively close, uh, which is approximately 5 kilometers distance. So uh, it was relatively close. And Yayamana inhabits all over two, two islands, so if you use ones from the other localities or other islands, the results may happen to change. In the future, we want to expand the research localities, and we also want to apply this method for other species. Finally, but, uh, what I want to tell you is the geometric model metrics is a powerful tool for species discrimination. It's useful even if they are difficult to discriminate by their appearance. And it is possible to be automatic by such as deep learning or AI. I'm sorry. And moreover, uh, in this experiment, we couldn't uh, discriminate the localities, but if it is able to discriminate some other local populations, it would be an easier and money-saving way of conservation monitoring than genetics. Thank you very much.